on ski patrol, I've gotten to know a lot of firefighters, and my husband's an ER nurse, and he gets to know a lot of firefighters, so we've we've very close with a lot of firefighters, so I'm happy to help out. Um, <clears throat> so after Evan sent me some material, um, I kind of looked at it, and he's, he's got some information here about injury prevention, which is really good. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here on posture, um, 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 some stretching, uh, body mechanics, um, and, and like seven key features. So this is all really good information. So if you haven't seen that, um, this is this is some good to look at. So I, I didn't want to go spend my time going over that stuff. So I wanted to cover some other things. And one of the things is uh, talking about the core stability. Um, so there's really good evidence that there's really a clear relationship between the muscles in your trunk engaging in different activities and and your leg motion or lower extremity motion. Um, so current research also suggests that if you have um, decreased core strength, then it can contribute to injuries of the back and the extremities. And it also may increase uh, the injury that you may sustain. So it, it'll increase the musculoskeletal uh, damage. Um, what core stability is, is the ability of the lumbopelvic hip complex, so that's the, um, the back and the hips working together to prevent buckling, which means um, compression of the spine, and a return to equilibrium after um, perturbation. So perturbation is whenever you, you get challenged to your body. So, for example, if you're if you're standing on a a floor that is unstable and it moves, how do you how can you react if that if that floor moves? Um, um, but also, um, bone and soft tissue or static elements may contribute to some degree. Um, but core stability is predominantly maintained um, by the dynamic function of the muscles. So this is where um, exercise is, is really important. Um, physical fitness programs have addressed um, uh, core strengthening and injury reduction. What they found is that if you engage in a physical fitness program specifically uh, focused on the core, that you, it will be effective in reducing injuries. The interesting thing is that they mostly just focused on back disorders. So they didn't focus on shoulder, or knee, ankle, or anything else. They just focused on backs. What they also showed um, was that a flexibility program did not reduce injury. So a lot of times people think doing a lot of stretches is going to help me prevent injury. Um, but what it did do was it reduced the injury or the incidence of the time lost from injury, the severity of the injury, and, the, and they had reduced costs from the injury. So um, stretching is helpful, but it's not as helpful as, as doing a strengthening program. So um, improvements in core or static strength and flexibility and addressing three kind of dimensions of movement. So acceleration, deceleration, and then dynamic stabilization, which is the ability to maintain a stable posture while moving. So a lot of people do exercises like lifting weights. You lift the weights, that's accelerating, and as you lower the weights, that's decelerating. Okay, so, but most people forget about the dynamic stabilization, which is, can you maintain that, that core and that spine position as, as you move um, your arms and your legs? So we see this as a huge problem um, with a lot of our athletes. For example, with pitchers. Um, pitchers, they, they go and throw the ball, and then they develop shoulder injuries. And mostly their, their problem is when they decelerate the ball. Um, but what we're finding is that it's mostly a problem in the core, so they're not able to engage and, and bring this whole trunk in, in, into um, a, a good, um, stable um, 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 foundation for that shoulder to move over, and then the muscles can effectively slow down that arm. So we work a lot with pitchers with just you know, bringing in the core to you know, accelerate and to decelerate. Because the muscles in the shoulders are, are really tiny, so you can see how how tiny these muscles are. So they can only take you know, so many um, accelerations and decelerations before they start to slow down. 
Um, and the same thing with um, some of the low back muscles are really small. So that's what we're, we're going to talk about a little bit later. So a lot of um, studies that are out there kind of look at uh, functional movement screens. Um, we look at um, athletes, you know, particularly with soccer players, and there's been some studies that look at um, uh, functional movement screens of firefighters. And in this study, it showed that there was no significant correlation between injuries and the uh, functional movement screen score. Um, and, and it's kind of the same thing what we're finding with different sports. We've, we've been testing some of the university uh, women's basketball team who have a lot of ACL tears on functional movement screens and, and do some training, and they're still tearing their ACL. You know, why, why is that happening? So we should be able to predict it. But, the, but there's no really good functional has to really to evaluate um, performance and to be able to predict injuries, unfortunately. So, um, but this one study that looked at functional movement scores did show a significant correlation between firefighter age, rank, tenure, and the functional movement score. So what they found was that it linked with time and service as a firefighter. And so in general, Flexibility and strength decline with age, and injuries are more likely. So what this says is that, you know, it's really important to stay on a really good strength and flexibility program, especially as you get older, to reduce the incidence of injury. So these are um, what we look at with functional movement screens. So we looked at an overhead squat, so being able to hold a stick, keep the spine straight, and to be able to go down into a nice deep squat without lifting the heels up. Um, doing a hurdle step, so this would be, um, this is a little rope here, and to be able to keep the spine straight, the shoulders level, and to be able to step over, over a string without um, um, breaking that posture. Um, an inline lunge, um, standing on a two by four, and to be able to lunge, keeping the back straight. Looking at shoulder mobility, so can you reach behind your back and touch your, your fingers together? Um, both directions. Rotary stability is being able to be in this hands and knees position and to be able to lift the opposite arm and leg up and be able to hold that position without that trunk rocking side to side. Um, hamstring flexibility and then uh, trunk stability with a push-up. So we kind of look at those and the problem with these is that it, it's, it's pretty static and in line, so we're not able to look at any kind of movement patterns, and especially awkward movement patterns. So, um, so that's one of the problems with the functional movement screen. Um, this, this study looked at core strengthening, um, and they put um, individuals in a program for 12 months, um, compared it to a control group, and what they found is that with specific training, for your back, it reduced the lost time to injuries by 52% and the reduction in number of injuries by 42%. So I think what's more important than actually being able to screen for injuries is to be able to um, be in a good strength program um, to work on your core strength and, um, and that's the most beneficial to help prevent injuries. So we certainly, as I pointed out, we can't look at awkward movement positions. And so with um, a lot of different um, um, jobs, like um, I have um, police, I have um, uh, construction workers, people who do jobs in which require awkward motions, we don't have a way to really look at um, evaluating someone to say you're at risk for this injury and this is what you need to do. So it really takes um, recognizing yourself and what your injuries are, where you think if you, if you feel like you're doing something and you feel like I'm not very strong with that or that's kind of straining to me to um, actually seek help and get it evaluated and get on a, a good program to address that. So there was one case study that I found that I thought was interesting. Uh, they took 52 firefighters and they completed a, a fitness test, a functional movement screen, in a biomechanical evaluation in which they looked at squat, lunge, pushing, pulling, and lifting activities. And they split them into three groups. 
Um, one group was coached in uh, movement and fitness, so they got a lot of input about how they're performing the exercise, what they're doing wrong, how they should fix it. And um, the second group was trained based on firefighter fitness guidelines, and the third group was normal routines. And what they found is that both intervention groups improved their fitness level. But the one that had um, uh, the coaching on how they should uh, perform the exercises correctly had greater improvement on job-specific tasks and was the only group without negative adaptations to um, arm and leg um, mechanics. So, for example, in the squat, looking at the tibia and making sure it's it's vertical, um, the knee is in line with the hip, and so as you see in this one, the knee is kind of deviated inside um, the hip there. So, um, so there's so it's not just knowing the exercises, but being able to do them correctly, and and watching the mechanics. So we found that with they did. Um, some functional movement screening and, and testing on a bunch of soccer players in California, um, in Santa Monica, and they they um, coached one group of girls and they didn't coach another group of girls and they gave them the exercises and the group that had the exercises that did not get coached still had significant amount of injuries, whereas the group that got coached had um, significantly less injuries. And so it, it's quite a popular program to teach um, girls and boys in soccer now um, how to warm up, and even in, in basketball, how to warm up to prevent injuries and how, how to um, um, do things correctly to prevent injuries. So for core strength summary, um, um, core strength is critical to preventing um, injuries to the back and the extremities. Early recognition of a problem and seeking guidance for correct instruction in mechanics can prevent um, the severity of the injury and um, the length that you, someone would have an injury. And then good body mechanics is critical. So um, the, the most important thing watching with the spine is um, bending from the waist and rotation. So, um, so we have this nice little um, disc here. So what I like to explain to people is that um, the, the bodies of the spine are kind of like building blocks. So they're like one on. So some people like to describe the, the disc as like a jelly donut. And so you have the, the bread layer and you have the little jelly in the middle. And if you keep doing this, that jelly kind of gets pushed back into the, the bread and eventually it can come out uh, so like this. Like and usually that stays, and it's usually in the foramen where the nerve comes out. So, so the key is, if you're doing anything with heavy lifting or carrying anything heavy, the more you can stay on these, these poster elements, the more protective it's going to be for your, your disc. Okay? And so, but you don't want to be hyperextended. You don't want to be way back here. So you just want to find, you just want to stay back on those, those poster elements to keep this from, can you see how hard it is for me to s squeeze that down if I stay? So even if you put a lot of load, it's, it's not going to push that disc back out. You see that? So if you're doing anything where you're bending down, trying to keep that, that, that trunk straight and using those hips and kind of bending forward like that, okay? The other important thing is to avoid bending and then twisting. The disc has fibers in it, like they're kind of shown on these ropes here, and they're the weakest when there's a rotational component. So if you bend and you're doing any twisting like this with weight, that's going to be harmful, potentially harmful. So if there's any way you can minimize that force that way, it'll be helpful. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, and most people think that this is bad, but keep in the, if you keep the spine straight, there's minimal pressure on the um, disc. But what you, you might strain here, lifting up, are ligaments. So if you were to lift 
something really heavy, you have ligaments that go across the top and then in between here. So if you were bent over like that and then you pull and those muscles are tiny, um, these can get kind of strained this way and you can tear the, the disc. So if you're in this position and you had to lift something heavy, then you want to drop down and get into that extended position and then lift. You don't want to lift right from this position. Okay. So those are the only two things about body mechanics I really kind of wanted to go over. Any questions about that? When we're training in the gym, um, we're not really concerned as much about form, uh, like you're talking more concerned about lifting when everybody's, I don't know, whatever, lifting more than you should, maybe, or just not understanding how to uh, get that core engaged. Um, so years of, you know, hinging and then just a little little bit where it's not, I mean, there's not uh, a large injury, it's maybe little tiny microscopic yep. breakdown of that. He, he's, he's correct. Um, the problem is, is that in the disc, there's no nerve fibers, so there's nothing that lets us know how much is breaking down, and there's n uh, no communication of pain or anything with the disc until it hits something that has pain fibers. So until it hits a nerve or until it hits, you know, something else. So that's that's when you're like, um, you know, you feel you pick you bend over to pick up a sock and your back goes out. You know, it wasn't really picking up the sock. It was like everything that led up to it that that did it. And so, um, and that's where knowing about good spine um, mechanics and core strengthening is really important, so you can protect yourself. And uh, genetics has a lot to do with it too. So if your your dad had a bad back, bad back fusion, you know, other people in your family have had back, then you are significantly increased risk of having some back problems. So you should be a little bit more adamant than the normal person. But some people can do that lifting and that forward bending for years and not have any any problem. If you um, um, have good posture all the time do a regular strengthening program, then you're going to lower your risk. Um, the other thing uh, I, I put here, so not just with some of the things that you're doing and going to the gym, is um, is watching that spine positioning with some exercise, not to be overextended and not to be overflexed. So watching how you do your exercises. So I just want to go over some exercises on the slides, and then I want to kind of do some demonstrations and, and kind of show you some things. So... Um, when I look at uh, flexibility, um, I really like dynamic flexibility. So um, I think static stretching is good after you exercise. Um, there's good research that show that um, static stretching a muscle weakens the muscle. So you don't want to do that before you do um, your job or exercise. So some examples are just some leg swings. Um, um, bringing your leg out to the side, so you know, bringing that leg in front and then up out to the side. Um, you can do a little um, kind of a chop kind of exercise, which would be really good to do like a lunge and reach up and then kind of rotate your trunk and go both directions. Um, this is a hamstring stretch. And so it's not static. It would be just kind of bending that knee and bringing it up and down. It's a nice stretch. You can even do that sitting, like sitting in your chair. You can just kind of stretch, keep your pelvis up, and, and just kind of work on some knee extension. And you can really feel that pull. If you pull that toe up towards you, if you want to try that now, if you pull that toe up towards you, you can really feel all the fascia stretch all the way up into your, your, into your hip. And so... As we're sitting through these lectures, you can work on your active hamstring stretching. Um, and this is a great stretch, too, to get into a side lunge and then move the other way and then stretch down into um, onto the other leg. And this is another good um, stretch for the back and for the legs. So an active stretch where you bend one knee, sh straighten the other knee, and then switch back uh, back and forth. Um, this is a standing lunge and then kind of doing a deadlift kind of motion. Really nice kind of dynamic warm-up 
stretch. And then if we look at, um, uh, and I want to just kind of show you these at the at the end, but uh, some of the core exercises that are really good to do is um, this is kind of an easier plank, uh, a plank on uh, from the feet with the feet uh, one foot in front of the other on on top of each other is a little bit harder, and then a regular plank. And a really good core exercise is actually to move between the plank to the side plank and back. So you go um, from plank to one direction and then back to the other. Um, we call this the bird dog, and this is a really good core stability. Um, being able to keep that back straight like a table and be able to extend that leg and then extend the arm. And so um, to be able to hold that position and then be able to hold it for longer periods of time. Um, and we can even add, um, whoops, can even add weights to the ankle and to the hand to actually increase that um, challenge. So um, um, this is this is can be quite challenging for some people. And then um, a sit up, a partial sit up where you're lifting the head. And here um, the hands are in the low back to just kind of protect the back to keep it from flattening. Because even even laying down, if you're kind of doing like a sit up, it can kind of do this as you're doing the sit up. So if you keep your hands back here, it kind of help protect, kind of help stabilize that low back, and you can kind of work those core muscles. So I'll show you those too. Um, for knee injury prevention, uh, mechanics is is really important. Um, core strength is really important. I work on core strength um, quite a bit, um, especially quad and hamstring strengthening is really important. Um, but hip strength is probably the, the most important thing. And I see a lot of hip muscle strength. So, for example, if if I ask them to stand on one leg and squat, the, the knee will drop in, and and we want the the knee to stay right over the midfoot. If you do anything and the knees drop in, that means there's a weakness in the hip. So the hip, the gluteus maximus, um, um, and medius help control that um, knee motion in the frontal plane. Okay, so that's more important than quads um, for a lot of people. And then the, the knee is kind of the joint in between the hip and the ankle. So it kind of takes the brunt. So when someone has a knee problem, I'm looking at what's going on above and what's going on below. So if, if core strength and hip strength look good, then I might look at the ankle. So if I take my, my foot and I roll my, my the inside arch down, it drops my knee in too. Yeah. So um, I see a lot of patellar tendonitis with firefighters, um, and and that's a lot what we work on: hip strengthening and then ankle stabilization to be able to hold it. Go ahead and stand up for me, and and stand on one leg, and bend that knee that you're standing on. Bend the knee you're standing on. Okay. So he's he's bending the hips good, but now bend the knee without sticking your butt back. Okay, and you feel how much more pressure it puts on your knee. Mm -hmm. So, so if you're if you're doing an activity that is, if you're carrying a lot of weight and you have to go up a big step or something or come down, the more you can flex at the hip and use those hip muscles to lower you or to um, raise you up onto something, it's going to protect your knee. We we don't really want people falling back on the heel, and, and I think the midfoot has been better because people fall way back too much. So they, they stay have better mechanics if we say midfoot, but you're right, it, it is to have most of the weight on the on the heel. Um the step up is really good. Um and uh really good quad strengthening, really good hip strengthening. Um you can work on acceleration by stepping up quicker. Um if you have like a resistance band that's that goes around you and you can work on, on just pulling some resistance that is even better. Um you can work on deceleration so it pulls you the other way and you can step forward so you really have to work on on decelerating that that motion um this is a standing fire hydrant so put the band between the knees and and then um, reaching that hip out so you're working on balance on one leg so you're working on strength here and then you're working on active abduction uh, of the hip it's a super good thigh burner uh, a lunge with your foot up on a box 
great quad exercise, great glute exercise. And this is just a standing lunge if, if the box is too much for you. And then this is, we call this the clamshell. So it works just primarily on external rotation of the hips and um, a re really good hip strengthener. It's also a really good core strengthener because you have to be t tight in your core to rotate that hip out effectively. And so um, um, Chris Powers put together um, some knee protection and some of the, the most important exercises that we start with is just this clamshell holding it for, for 60 seconds. Then we do like an abduction, just lifting the leg up to the side, holding that for 60 seconds. And then we do the fire hydrant in, on hands and knees and holding that for 60 seconds. We just start with that with athletes and we just kind of build on that. So, um, it, and it's pretty, it's pretty tough to, to hold it for a minute for most people. So shoulders, um, the most important thing with shoulders is for injury prevention is posture. So, um, in the shoulder, um, I kind of think about um, the, the scapula as being um, the, the, the stability of the shoulder and everything works from this. So um, what do you call those trucks that they pick up dirt and rocks? What do you call those trucks? Backhoe. Backhoe. Um, so if you think about a backhoe, that's kind of similar to how the shoulder works. So if you have a good stable truck, um, then it can pick up really big rocks and it can do a lot of work. But if you p were to put a, a, a small little truck on a, a really big shovel, then every time it tries to pick up a big rock, it would just fall over, right? So that's what happens with the shoulder is if you don't have good strength around the shoulder blade, then whenever you're trying to lift something heavy with your hand, if, if this is weak, then it, it's just going to collapse. And so you're going to end up with rotator cuff injury or, or something else. So the most important thing with injury prevention is being able to keep that shoulder in a good position and keep it nice and strong. So um, if if I take someone who's sitting like this, no, see, see where you were, and I pull on his shoulder, can you see how I'm just pulling on all these soft tissue here when I pull on it? So these tissues, all day when he sits like this, have to support the weight of the arm in the body. So if he comes up nice and straight and tall, and so the shoulder's in a good position, and I yank on it, you see how much more solid that is? So, I mean, he, that can take a lot of weight. So one is, if you, if you have um, crappy posture all day, then what it does is it's kind of like, um, if you take a sponge and you wring it, and you put it in water, it's kind of hard for that sponge to absorb water, right? So if you put stress and strain on all these tissues all day long, then it's, it's not giving, getting good blood supply so that when you go to lift something and do something, it's just going to fail. So, so keeping as often as you can this upright position. So what I tell some people is like, let the sun shine on your chest so that it just automatically keeps your shoulders back. So you want to think about that if you're lifting anything that you want your shoulders here and not here. Okay. So if you're going to lift something deep, you know you want your shoulders back here as you're lifting up, so that you've got the ligament support and you're not just um, you're straining that that soft tissue. Yeah, the shoulder is is uh, way different than the back and the knee because it gives up stability for mobility. So it is. You know, you think about like in the Olympics, you know, with the gymnasts, they can hold their whole body weight out here and they can go in all different directions. I mean, it's really an amazing machine. Um, but when you give up stability for mobility, you really are relying on all the, all the tissues to work dynamically together. You want good flexibility, good strength, good timing around that whole shoulder complex. So if you want to keep injury uh, free, then um, as much as you can, then you, you want to kind of keep all that balance together. So you want to keep those stabilizers strong, you want to keep those movers strong, you want to keep the flexibility there. And, and so oftentimes when there is an imbalance, that's when people start to have a problem. So some good exercises are just some rotator cuff exercises where you're just lifting the weight out 
decide. So if you're, uh, you can lay down or you can just bend over and do these, you know, bent over, uh, working on weights and, and externally rotating the shoulder in that fashion. You can use a band to you work on rotating out or rotating in. And then certainly a lot of periscapular strengthening. So if we look at exercise, what should you do? Um, exercise should be performed at least three times a week, but low back exercises have the most beneficial effect when you work on your back every day. Uh, no pain, no gain um, is really not true when it comes to working on back strengthening or on anything to keep your body healthy. Um, and especially true when it comes to weight training. And then general exercise programs that also combine cardiovascular components um, like walking have been shown to be more effective in both um, rehabilitation and for injury prevention. Um, when you sleep at night or when you're sleeping at all in your in a bed, your disc will fill up with water. So when you get up out of bed, they're going to be the most full. And as you are active during the day, they get less full. So you're actually taller after you've been sleeping than, than at the end of the day. So where this is really a, um, I think, an issue with, with firefighters is that you can sleep in between um, calls and then you have to get up and respond to something and you may have to do some lifting right away and that puts you at increased risk for injury to a disc. So this um, bullet says that um, some of the research shows that fatigue in the back um, contributes to injury. So a lot of times when people lift, they lift and do three sets of 10 or they want to do short bursts of exercise, whereas we need to work a little bit more on endurance training. So that's where holding it for a minute and holding things longer is really helpful for back training. So you know, knowing what your, what your needs are, what your job is going to be, it would be good to train it that way. So to know what, what you might be able to do. And, and so it might be good to you know, kind of simulate that hose using bands or weights or something like that so you can build up that endurance. But good point. Um, so my a point I want to make is there's no such thing as an ideal set of exercises for all individuals. Um, and what's important is that you know yourself and you know what you need and you seek attention earlier than later to help yourself.